Praise the Lord and welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Holy Week Revival of Ecclesia Christian Life. Praise God for the pastor, my friend, Reverend Stephon Kirby, and this opportunity. God bless you and heaven smile upon you, man of God. Our scriptorial lesson today comes from Luke chapter 20, verses 1 through 26, and John 12, verses 7, 37, excuse me, and 40. That's Luke chapter 20, 1 through 26, and John chapter 12, verses 37 through 40, with three scriptures as our focus. Luke 20, verses 1 and 2, verses 20, and John chapter 12, verse 37. Again, our three scriptures as our focus is Luke chapter 20, verse 1 and 2, verse 20, and John chapter 12, verse 37. Let us pray. Father, we come now saying thank you, O Heavenly Father. We ask, O Heavenly Father, in this revival that someone will come running and saying, what must I do to be saved? God, we ask that right now during this revival, O God, that you will heal broken hearts, O God, that you will mend broken spirits, O God, that you will alleviate the voids and the holes in people's souls right now, O God. God, that you would bring about miracles. You will bring about signs. You will bring about wonders today, O God. Within this revival, God, revive us again, O God. God, we ask right now that this word that is about to be preached would go into the areas of our lives, our minds, our hearts, our souls, our bodies that are dark and have no light. Let it light up these areas and illuminate the very Jesus that is within us, that the Jesus in me can know the Jesus in you. God, give us what we need right now. In Jesus name, we pray. We give you honor and glory. Amen. Palm Sunday kicked off the annual celebration of the Holy Week. If you were brought up in the Baptist church like I was, Every year we would commemorate this special week by sharing palm leaves with our church members on Sunday. We would observe a holy week from Sunday to Sunday, seven days. Each day has its significance and the right to be in this special week. Starting with Sunday, you have the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. Monday, Jesus curses the figless tree and cleans out the temple by overturning the money changers tables for a second time. The first time he did it was in John chapter two, verses 11 and 12. Now, my assignment is to enlighten you about Tuesday today of the Holy Week, or as I like to call it, Trick him and trap him Tuesday. That's right. Trick him and trap him Tuesday. Because Jesus rode in on a donkey and was honored by the people. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The religious leader's worst fear has happened. Jesus Christ of Nazareth to whom they had declared a troublemaker. An irritation to their way of controlling the masses conception of religion and the way they should live their lives has just won the people's vote. This is all political. It's not personal, but political. Let's break it down, shall we? The Pharisees who opposed the Roman government because of its intrusion of the Jewish way of life. Herod the Great and his followers, the followers, the Herodians, joined forces. That's right. These established enemies joined forces to take down one man. One man. They joined forces to take down one man. 
Even the Sadducees, the religious liberals who refused the thought of resurrection, angels or spirits, took their turn to undermine Jesus. Three things you should get out of Trick Him and Trap Him Tuesday. One, they challenged his authority. Two, they wanted to discredit his power. And three, be prepared. One, they challenged his authority. Two, they wanted to discredit his power. And three, be prepared. They challenged his authority. Luke chapter 20, verse one and two says, one day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple courts and proclaiming the good news, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, together with the elders, came up to him and said, tell us by what authority you do these things. Who gave you this authority? Now, the religious leaders today would be the pastors, the associate ministers, and the deacons. The religious leaders interrupted Jesus while he was teaching in the temple to start some mess. They challenged his authority because, remember on Monday, he messed up their money racket they had at the temple by overcharging visitors and townsfolk for things needed in the temple causing them to question Jesus's right to do these things. Jesus had not been given authority by the religious leaders. What gives him the right to do these things? They wanted answers. And in getting these answers, they tried to force Jesus to declare he had divine power from God, where they would then be able to charge him with blasphemy arrest him, and then they would have the legal reason and the legal right to kill him. Jesus knew their motives and agreed to their questions if they answered his first. John's baptism, Jesus said. He said, John's baptism, was it from heaven or human origin? Well, you know, John's preaching confirmed Jesus as divine. But if it was human origin, their actions being human could be seen as being emotional, which could result in anger and malice, envy, jealousy, and might would want to cause bodily harm and riot against the religious leaders. Well, after the religious leaders pondered their response, response excuse me, to Jesus's question that he asked them, their response was this. We don't know where it was from. It was the Sanhedrin's responsibility to know the difference between true and false prophets. Yet shamefully, they had to admit to Jesus they didn't know. So Jesus didn't answer their questions. Why should Jesus answer questions that he knows are meant to trick him and trap him from people who don't know what they supposed to know all those years of studying and reading and upholding the law, condemning people when they don't comply and they want to challenge Jesus. Not today, Satan, not today. Verse, I mean, point number two, they wanted to discredit his power. They wanted to discredit Jesus's power. Luke 20 and 20 says, keeping a close watch on him, Jesus, they sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. And I know you're probably wondering, who is this governor? Well, the governor is Tiberius Caesar at the time. The only way the spies could catch Jesus in something he said was to keep him talking. You ever met somebody and every time they see you, they ask questions of your whereabouts. Where'd you go today? When you get off work, where did you go after work? Why did you go to the store? Why, where did you get in the store? And what are you doing now? They want to know everything you're doing and at all times you're doing it. 
Those spies watched Jesus closely to get Jesus to open up to them. They gave him a compliment. <laughs> Teacher, we know that you speak what is right and you teach what is right. But what do you what you do not do is show partiality, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Uh Oh, somebody say he's getting buttered up. Oh, boy. Here we go again. The spies ask Jesus a question. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus saw through their duplicity or their deceitfulness and said, show me a denarius. A denarius is a silver coin worth 10 donkeys. 10 donkeys. Jesus said, show me a denarius whose image and inscription is on it. They replied, a Caesar's. Then give back to Caesar's what is Caesar's and to God's what is God's. You see, the spies were unsuccessful in trapping Jesus and what he had said in the public and were astonished by his answer, and they became silent. The spies wanted to trip up Jesus in front of other Christians, where his witness would be tarnished, sullied. They wanted to make him look like a charlatan, a sham, a fraud, a fake, an imposter posing like he's not anointed, not gifted, like he's not talented. But the way he answered them, shut them up and shut them down. On to the next one. When you are prayed up and you've read your scriptures daily, no matter what your haters throw at you, God can use what's stored up in you to dispel your haters. So get to praying and get to reading your Bible daily. Point number three, be prepared. John chapter 12, verse 37 says, even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still will not believe in him. All that Jesus had done, the miracles of the wine at the wedding at Cana, the cleansing of the temple two times, when he revealed his identity to the woman at the well. When he healed the nobleman's son in Capernaum, a distance away by merely speaking the word of God. When he healed a man born blind and raised his friend Lazarus and daughter, Jarius' daughter from the dead. All that he had done and they still don't believe. John 12, 37 through 40 is Jesus's final lament over Jerusalem. This was a striking blow to his heart to know Israel lacked in faith in him. They lacked in faith in him. They were eyewitnesses to the miracle sounds and wonders, yet they still didn't believe. Their failure to recognize his deity, his godship, left them utterly unprepared for the movement of God that was to come. They were utterly unprepared because soon the temple would be destroyed and Jerusalem right along with it. Ah, the mourning and suffering of Israel will be great. This is why Jesus teaches and encourages us to be faithful, watchful, and prepared over in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew chapters 24 and 25. Oh, what a Tuesday. Huh? What a Tuesday. The religious leaders used everything in their arsenal to trick him and trap him. And we know the events that will take place symbolically on Friday when we see Jesus at the cross. So don't be dismayed when your enemies, your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors and strangers try to trick you and trap you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just turn. 
and get in position to head to the cross. Because if there is no cross, there is no victory. Stop running from rough times and embrace them and turn and get in position and head to the cross. Because at the cross is where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart uh, rolled away. Right. It was there by faith uh, I received my sight, uh, and now uh, I am happy all the day. At last, and did um, my Savior bleed, oh, and did my Sovereign die? Mm -hmm. Would He devote that sacred head for such a worm? as I. Yeah. Was it for crimes that I have done? Yes, he crawled upon a tree. Mm -hmm. Amazing pity, grace unknown, yeah. and love beyond degree. Because at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Oh, trick him and trap him Tuesday. They tried it. Yes, Look sir. at your neighbor and say, they tried it. They tried it. They tried it. Trick him and trap him Tuesday. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Hallelujah.